Hey, what's going on everyone? It's David Palmer, Leo King, and Dylan, the human design maven here for <laughs> here for Before Dawn. We're getting crazy here on Before Dawn today on this last day of August of 2022. Hope that you join HiVibe.tv. Check down the links below, especially our apps down below to make sure that you become a member and subscribe for all the exclusive content, daily video horoscopes, weekly horoscopes, weekly shows, and so much more. We have quite the show for you tonight. How are you doing tonight, Dylan? Ready to drop some bombs. Boom. Actually, yeah, like even us talking about, we don't really talk about the show, but we just go, yes, this is where we go. Yep, it's gonna be intense. Let's do it. Yeah, the channel forms five, three to five days before the actual show. It does. <clears throat> And it's like sending little tidbits and then it just all forms into altered fate, phantom galaxy, <laughs> transhuman commerce. These are just some of the subjects we're going to touch on tonight. Just a few. Where do you think we should start? <sighs> I feel that there's shows where I feel like Either I or you come up, and I feel like this show really, the response came from you the most. And I am responding to the response that you originally got, which I'm totally satisfied for. Yeah, I feel it too. I think we should start with this um, kind of, dis this discussion that kind of links a lot of the points we brought up in previous shows about what this mandated experiment might yeah. be eventuating towards in the bigger picture in the grand scheme of things and in the great reset of things. Yeah, I think that piggybacks well off where we kind of left people last week is that that's another form of wake it, but I think people are looking more for like the unilateral version of this in a way, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Especially because I feel that it is kind of weird today that this experiment's gonna go to a new form that was approved today. And that's concerning to me because people might look at it like they're, they're coming out with another experiment, but it's different. They're updating the code to it. And then both companies that push this are fighting now in court over it. Over who gets to release it? No, over the patent that's mm. the... Moderna, you know, is suing Pfizer now. Mm. So now they're, they're all like wild dogs fighting over the money over it all. That should be a nice sign of like, did they really care about people? Right. If, if there was any doubt left in your mind as to the real intention behind this, that's a huge giveaway. Yeah. And it also is kind of that continuous, you know, red versus blue, donkeys versus element, uh, elephants. It's like this whole duality of what the real hidden conflict is, which is usually the, the red, the Anunnaki versus the blue, the Dracos, you know, and their fight for dominance over who's gonna be, you know, the, the chair, the like board of executives over the installation of this operating system that's here to anchor the phantom matrix into our world through our DNA. And sit on the Game of Thrones of a phantom throne of thorns or needles. Needles, yeah, that's it. What a great, I'm, I'm there visually, I'm like, <laughs> wow, scary. But I think that the info today is about really helping people. <sighs> We're, you and I are going to go to the doorstep and, as you said, ding dong ditch it. Yeah. Of this phantom portal fake door. Right. Because a lot of the things that we bring up may be jarring to the status quo of how we view our life in this world. And I think the thing to really keep in context and clarity is that fear is the ultimate weapon that's being used against the collective. And yeah. so if we prepare ourselves with 
the correct information and the correct timing and we empower our discernment, we don't have to be in fear about any of these truths that are coming to light. And I think that's the most important thing for anyone who's engaging in this content to remember is that, yes, there may be shocking things that come through, but none of this is necessarily happening to us, it's happening for us. And we have to keep that perspective because the second that we drop into fear, we drop into that lower vibration and we're more easily controlled, we're more easily convinced, and we're more easily bullied, threatened, and scared into unaligned action for our bodies, for our health, for our future. And so I think that just needs to remain in focus, that this is never about fear. This is always about empowerment through awareness. Yeah, and even just the term phantom, because I think that's like where things are going, mm -hmm. it's a figment of imagination or it's a ghost, right? Like a phantom who haunts lonely roads. But what's interesting is like the last one, which is denoting a financial agreement or transaction that has been invented for fraudulent purposes, but that uh, does not really exist. exist, which is very much what this kind of has been the last two years. Mm -hmm. the, the truth that I always have been trying to get clear to people is, there is no origin to whatever has been around that has been the whole point of creating these experiments. What mm. if the experiments are creating the said problem that is the false financial way of doing it, but also I think a deeper way that we're covering today is the installation of something that was a, a false thing that you create to create now an even more false situation to then encapsulate people into an even more false reality and embodiment for where your soul will be embodied and how it will be used. Used, yes. And I think, I mean, there's been this clip that went around that was new to me. You had already seen it. And it was kind of linking a lot of these facts about, you know, what is the nature of the technology that's been implanted in our in many people's bodies and that it's actually about this ability to have self-organizing self-constructing um, essentially filaments or fibers within the human body that act as almost a phantom nervous system you know what is our organic nervous system it's a network of neural t connections that send signals throughout the being to essentially bring the soul's energy into physical form so if we have a phantom version of that within the body, it's the same idea of something that brings energy in from spiritual dimensions or unseen realms. But in this case, with what's in the bodies of many people now, it's pulling that energy from the phantom, the false, the inverted reality and bringing it even more in depthly intertwined into this reality. Yes. And how even in this kind of, let's say, phantom network that's being created within the, the bodies of the collective can be an operating system for future solutions for things that we already see are crumbling as the cross of planning dies off and all of these societal institutions that hold us in order and organization are destined for destruction as, as Kali comes to town, as we spoke of. And it's like this this mass initiative to hold in place through our very bodies, through this false network within the bodies, hold in place, you know, the control over our finances, over our attention and over our soul energy, which is the primary medium, the primary um, resource on this planet that's being fought over. It's, you know, something that I would say is called like the quantum, the quantum of our soul is like the direct, um, measure of the soul energy on earth and these phantom networks that have been worked into our dna through potential you know through these in injections there's basically a new network being formed through which this new reality can be projected into our reality from somewhere that's not even there is no origin point there's no origin point when you bring up the financial aspect of it too it's like what if the idea of what we call financial or worth or value 
through the idea of money and what to spend things on and so forth isn't a natural place as it is. So it's like creating an even, it's piggybacking off already the false kind of identification of what value is, the false identification of, of, of exchanging of goods and keeping people separate and so forth. I mean, if you look at history, sure, yeah, we've had things that we've used to exchange in life. It's more about exchange. And that's what's funny, right? Wall Street's the stock exchange. But like, there's, there's things of human exchange, right? But this is where it's removing the human from the exchange, period. But being the point of where not only it actually is the exchanger, like transmitted, like, part of the network of exchanging for other people's financial actual network where you know crypto is the idea of course of a blockchain and then of course it takes very powerful computers with lots of gpu power to be able to create those blockchains that are very randomized but they can always be traced back to me it's like turning people into the computers that transmit the blockchain yeah i mean we're we're kind of well, the, the intent is to turn us into living nodes in a worldwide quantum computer that can be so that we become the medium through which these complex transactions and, you know, ledger, you know, tangents can be processed through. So not only is your soul being kind of used as a new kind of currency, it's actually your physical body that's being used as a processing unit. Yeah. And there are so many applications that this can like extend into, into the future. And it's all about understanding also, how can we get this stuff out of us if it's not the timeline we want to be on? And I think there's a lot of awareness to be raised around, you know, if we are people who want to retake our soul energy, you know, are there ways that we can get this stuff out of us as well? Because I do believe that there are many ways that the resilience of these human bodies and the nine centered beings that we are to process out this kind of energy, if that's truly our desire. And I think that needs to be kept in, in context as well, because it's not that all is lost. If perhaps you have taken a shot, um, it's about understanding that anything is still of the elemental universe is of you know, the base elements that all things are created, carbon, atoms, etc. And there's always a way to use the elemental nature of things to cleanse them out of our system as well. Yeah, and at the same time, I think what it's doing is it's creating a, a, a phantom slash false fate. Like, a, like, so I agree with you that anybody in our physical vessels have the massive ability in its natural way to deal with these things. But I think when we talk about etheric energy and the etheric connection, there's a false etheric connection that has been created. The mm -hmm. idea you're doing things for community, the idea that you're doing things for, and it's a false sense of the community because right. it's creating the most separatist way of how our society slash our human collective connects to each other, right? Mm -hmm. And created with lots of phantom energy. No, we'll never force this on you. And then, no, we're forcing it on you. And then turning other people to be like, you don't have that, then you can't come in here, right? right. So that's the false beginning of like a splinter of an alternate universe. But really it's taking people's natural divine fate and creating like a, phantom fate line that's slowly pulling and then just rah, yanking people in the other direction so i think that's where the issue is is that even if you do have the physical vessel that you think you can do this are you sure that your awareness is not still falling for even if it's not going to be about what we've been presented in the last two years it's piggybacking now into these new scenarios that are yeah. all alternately created that are all phantom that are not natural or real they're all illusions mm -hmm. and continuing for people to be like well i'm okay now because i went through that let me just keep following the next phantom thing they're doing yes and, and i've seen you know friends and loved ones continue on this path like 
you know, I guess they have monkey pox vaccines now too. They're using the smallpox vaccine, yeah. And, you know, who knows what other piece of this fabricated operating system are in those as well. And I think it's also super interesting that we've brought awareness over these past episodes around this idea of the phantom matrix or the phantom earth, the fallen earth timeline. And then this week, we've got more pictures from this James Webb telescope. And what do we have from NASA? The first pictures of the stunning phantom James. galaxy. A picture that could not look more photoshopped. I mean, we're supposed to believe that this is actually somewhere out there in space and that it's just so perfectly spiralic. And the um, caption even says, the phantom galaxy, formerly known as M74, is a kind of spiral galaxy known as a grand design spiral. So in the, in, you know, the, the covenant of free will on which this universe runs, in which even the dark has to dis disclose its plans in plain sight, we have this awareness being brought that there is a grand design spiral that is also known as a phantom galaxy. So they're putting it right in front of your face. They're giving you this glitzy Hollywood eyes, you know, interstellar image, and they're trying to paint it as something beautiful and otherworldly, when in actuality, this is an encoded message saying, look, our grand design spiral is here. The fallen timeline is in play. And we want you to believe that it's promising and beautiful and symmetrical, but really it, it's a clear signal that we're moving into the next phase of this experimental tangent of tangent of tangents in which as we get pulled deeper into basically let's not skip the ads as we as we get pulled deeper into these narratives we give more and more of our consciousness potential into these fallen timelines and so even with, the, with things like this coming up, we've got to have immense discernment and even the most beautiful pictures that, that are shown to us, we have to be willing to question this and really look between the lines and between the pulses of information that's given to us to see what is the narrative that is being strewn across you know, our consciousness. Yeah, and it reminds me of the Mandelbrot set they did in the 80s where they took infinity and they said let's see what infinity looks like through the math and the Mandelbrot set like if you see I actually just had a better picture which is right here right like it's almost like they're trying to copy that mm -hmm. of fractal geometry right mm -hmm. but it's within 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 right that the, that the idea of infinity is Within itself, it's it's the same thing within, within. In the picture that you show, if we can go back to it, Brian, it's like, it's trying to do that, but all parts of it do not really seem... Infinite. Infinite, they're, correct. They're yeah, kind of not, all collapsing in onto themselves, and they've given us this nice um, Adobe Photoshop glow yeah, in the glow, middle. Yeah, I know. So it looks like there's some kind of promise at the center of the spiral. But, you know, even in, you know, from some of the highest spiritual teachers from this age in the past have all guided us to, uh, to understand that at your moment of passing, the bright light, the warmth that seems to present itself is the path into the forced reincarnation loop. Right. Not, you know, it's actually the more cold, dark passageway that we get to choose at that time of passing that's going to pull us actually out of, you know, the reach of the phantom matrix or the frequency fence that kind of forces us back down here we have to be able to see that usually what is most bright and captivating and beautiful and glitzy and you know what does glamour mean it means an illusion the most glamorous things that are shown to us especially in the spiritual or you know in in astronomy these are the illusions you know as, this is also going into this awareness of the false ascension matrix and how I mean, I have, a, I have a kind of map here that shows it, how a lot of these tricks that are being perpetrated on us in terms of false spirituality and the false ascension matrix are only here at the fourth dimension. You know, they're right. basically a block in between the higher 
eight dimensions up here where we get back to source, back to our true core creation pattern. And it's just trying to basically put this overlay, this false right. light that makes us stop and be like, oh yeah, I made it. You know, I talked to Ascended Master mm -hmm. so-and-so, it's all good. But actually it's a complete, um, you know, it's like a false set, you know, it's like where you go up to the, the beautiful like set and like in the Truman Show and push it over and there's nothing right. behind it. It's like virtual reality where it looks like you can be in this really awesome astral plane. And if you ever notice any virtual reality, it is a plane, but you know, it's false that you're not there. Right. That there is an end to it. There is you an end to it. You will hit the wall. You will hit the and wall you'll just to do where that video game. Yeah, the video game will like, go, eh, 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 and then the whole like the, the VR set starts squeaking out, you know. And then it respawns you back to the origin point. Right, but when you brought up, especially that warm light, it reminds me of when Neo and Matrix, the first one, wakes up and he has to take the red pill, and what happens? He gets cold. Mm. And then he starts tripping out and looking at the mirror. And that's when Morpheus tells him, like, he's like, am I dreaming? He's like, what's a dream? You know, like, what if you're in a dream within a dream? Like, what, it, what actually is real? And his wake up is to get out of that space as he literally is, wakes up in the pod and it, it's the, I'm out of it. Mm -hmm. But the realization of waking yourself up out of it it's, it's pretty ugly. fucking gnarly. It's, it's not really warm and cuddles. Mm -mm. Right? The warm and cuddly energy is like, and I hate to use it because it happened today, but how Biden went to a nine-year-old girl and said, hey, baby. Hey, baby. Like, what? And then went, how old are you? And she's like, nine. He's like, oh, almost double digits. With already what's going, coming up about all that stuff with him. Mm-hmm. That's what I think of when people think, I'm going to the light when I pass away. It's all warm and cuddly. And you just have a vision of Joe Biden being like, hey, baby, how old are you? Come back in here. Yeah. Are you uh, ripe to be harvested is the real question behind the question there. So with this phantom galaxy image, whew, and the idea that there is an alternate fate coming in. Because if you, if you take the matrix and you think that you didn't really have a choice because you knew so much that you were searching for the truth that finally Morpheus does arrive, the red pill arrives, and it wasn't your choice to take it. Fate already had made that choice for you. You mm -hmm. already had set that up divinely when you came down here. Mm hmm this is trying to have people somehow go, wait, the blue pill's the way to go. Mm -hmm. Like an installed fixed fate that seems like your destiny. Right. But and it it's does an imposition. It, yeah, and it doesn't have love attached to it. It has like outside technology or outside influence to be the guiding light, right. which is a false light, mm -hmm. right? So it's like true energy that's faded and is, is love. Like there's gonna be love where you don't, need a, you don't need a technological or an outside thing to create love, right? Like you don't need like, where's my love device? <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Yeah. Where's not my like, external connection where's, to love? Where's the shot for love? Do you right. have that one ready yet? Where's the variant for that? Yeah, my variant's not working too well for love. I can't wait till the FDA approves my new love variant shot. <laughs> but, you know, in these times, if they would have used that in the way that people have been feeling, because I think the scary or the feeling of isolation and stuff is feeling that there are people choosing and it's creating cracks. But what at the end of the day, we know it's all coming back to the original timeline. And this is all just this huge false walled that they're just trying to like a dam, like beavers, almost like keep it going and knowing the whole river is going to rush through and push it all down. Right. But it feels almost like people who are in their fate are feeling in the collective, like so many are going off the fate train, you know, and on to this. It's like a phantom in the way that that circular 
freaking picture and it they said it was hubble and james webb so it's kind of like weird how it's like why are you guys so obsessed with and calling it a phantom because it reminds me of phantom of the opera which you know because that kind of i think hits people who might be like phantom there's a lot of weird things that are phantom right but like the idea of phantom of the opera and it's funny because i know girls who are like that's such a good story because he's so obsessive with keeping his mysterious energy and his masked musical genius and if you just replace some of these things with this obsessive of a mysterious technology an alternate false fake masked scientific genius living in a subterranean labyrinth but i would say a subterranean reptilian nest catacomb network yeah beneath the gaia mm -hmm. and i get it that there's been such a it's the number one broadway play by the by the way <clears throat> of all time right that is currently the longest running show in broadway history but i think it's weird that it's one of those things where it's like if you take 50 shades of gray or you take romance novels for women the feminine they're attracted to the weird dark obsessive mysterious energy even jordan peterson did showed the studies of like men and women and with like pornography and stuff like that and women aren't into pornography right they're into the stories of like the 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 mysterious dark hero that's a little bit bad they like the bad guy mm -hmm. so they'd like to read the stories about the bad guy or the vi visualizations of the bad guy stuff like that it's more of the the storyline for mm -hmm. the feminine mm -hmm. and the masculine is more of the visualization of just something that's hot and exciting and youthful and fun and then but doesn't become obsessed some do but most just are like yeah hell yeah, yeah whatever yeah so if you think of the, the 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 feminine energy of gaia the feminine feminine energy of the universe right now right it almost kind of like maybe is like kind of like well this is enticing but at the same time being like oh i don't know right mm -hmm. and i think it goes you know way way back into different histories where you know the the female principle of this planet has been hijacked and used you know for forced breeding programs so that beings like you know reptilians or dracos can be born into this physical reality because you know the female vessel has been used as almost like a a forced birthing chamber and forced birthing vessel and that imprint of being used by these dark forces to create something that wasn't really meant to be here that's a trauma imprint in the feminine and the thing where most uh, you know many so-called kinks which this is not kink shaming but so many so-called kinks can come from an actual place of trauma and trying to basically re-experience and and re-heal that trauma by experiencing it again and it con kind of creates these consciousness loops where we become obsessed with the very forces that put us in this downward spiral to begin with right and then it gets stretched and mixed with part truth part lie and when they're woven together the ability to discern is even more obscured and so we find ourselves being attracted to the very things that cause the problem in the first place because it's being melded with so many pieces of what is good and what is true of our origin and it's not masked the true energy mm -hmm. like if you think about what you're saying and the feminine energy, right? Like in order to birth, there is the sexual, there is the mysterious and the dark realmish energy that mm -hmm. goes with that vibe, mm -hmm. but mixed with love, right? Is the only thing that makes it feel eternal and beautiful and graceful and like amazing. So when I think of anything phantom, like even in Beauty and the Beast, right? At least he's showing who he is. Not like he's wearing a mask, right? He's mm -hmm. fucking a beast, you know? <laughs> she falls in love with him with the mask off. Mm -hmm. And that's how it turns him. And it even converts her in many ways of like getting rid of her kind of weird 
nobody's out there with the with the knowledge and the books and the smarts because gaston is so you know like i don't care let's go hunt and shoot right let's go mm -hmm. do this but this is weird because it does remind me of the phantom of the opera where women i know a lot of women who are obsessed with it because it's like so mysteriously dark and women and men can get trapped into it by feminine or masculine right that has that really mysterious dark, but you can never get the love out of them. It's almost like the chase of the, mm -hmm. the toxic one. Mm -hmm. And this is now on a level that they think they've used humans in programming, but now it's going galactically to where like creating a galactic situation of a phantom universe to almost attract parts of the universe. But people don't realize that we are the stars. We are embedded with all this. So our actions are a reaction to the universe too. Mm -hmm. And the more that the collective follows the false, masked, mysterious, dark, because a lot of people, if you take the test for what happened over the last couple of years, people were just taking it because their number one was curiosity. Like, I want to take the test just to see if it says it's negative or positive. Yeah. <laughs> right? Just as many people who probably were like, well, other people, I'm curious to see what it feels like mm -hmm. to take it. Right? Instead of being like, I don't give a fuck. Like I, like, I don't need to know what the test is. I can feel. We were built to know within ourselves, not the external, physical, you know, contraption oriented things to know if you have something or not. Mm -hmm. It's pretty easy to know when you're sick, you're sick. You're, and then you know what to do to take care of yourself. You don't need to go take a test. Yeah. And that's also this idea of the cross of planning having always required us to give our internal authority, our inner authority out to that external source and say, only the institution, only the God, only the priest, only the president, only, only the doctor, only, only the, the doctor medical institution can tell you what's truly true. And this is kind of the discernment test on an even more macro level, the discernment test of the program saying, who's going to anchor themselves into their true inner authority and who's going to fall for the false light trap and the descending timeline. And it's up to the choice within the choice of choosing either within yourself to feel the truth or not, or to take some kind of external authority as your authority. That is the name of the game in this era, in this final lead up into the sleeping phoenix will you choose outer authority or will you choose inner authority that will determine your fate yes and and it to to counter back with and not even counter but to come back to knowing that inner authority instead of giving it to the outer my dad's mother my grandma was christian science so when my dad had to go to health class in eighth grade he had to be removed my grandmother was like in Christian science, it's the idea that if you, if your mind takes on something like, let's use HIV, for example, if you keep studying it and keep freaking out about it, which creates hypochondria, right? <laughs> like there was Negative no hypochondria placebo. in our ancient history. Okay. Mm -hmm. But once information started coming out, right? So people that are hypochondriacs and freak out, Christian science is the belief that you through the eternal through god can heal yourself mm -hmm. right that you don't need to know what it is out there because the second you know what it is is the only way that you could even have it because your mind will actually create it mm -hmm. so think about how much information especially over the last 20 years with the internet of webmd and everybody going on what do i have what do i have and they just keep updating shit and alternating shit and then the more you go deeper into it when you look at the actual numbers it's always this like the hardest chance in the world to get but people believe they've got it right mm -hmm. so so many people believe especially if you take this crazy weird no origin so i don't even want to give it the name that they give it because there's no origin to it except it is kind of weird that it is a name that identifies with more of kind of like a financial transaction that's going on id right mm -hmm. cove id and then 19. Mm -hmm. but it's like that's where it's like cr trippy is that people have given their external authority to informational mental stuff 
and are creating it in their body. So the most sickest people are the people who are constantly thinking about or researching, well, how, can I get this? Can I, when you have no reason to. If your body internally is fine, people, and that's where anxiety comes from, right? You start tripping out over things that could be, mm -hmm. but, and then waiting for the test to see if it is going to be, which are given by authorities that are creating these things to actually keep the gamut going. So a good example would be the last two years of testing, right? You can look up the data and even right now, the, the federal government just stopped the funding of getting a test September 2nd, right? So no more free tests. And California in the last three weeks said, sorry, none of the tests are working. It'll say you're negative when you're really positive or say you're positive when you're really negative. And that's been happening since the beginning. Even the CDC director just came out and said, yeah, the, the, issue, the reason why I'm redoing the CDC right now and cleaning it up is because under the Trump administration, right? Like she always like, tries to throw it to that first. The testing was just horrible. Like they didn't work. So the testing never worked. So, so many people went out and stayed isolated. And the idea of the word quarantine is for a sick person. And this goes back from like days of being on a ship quarantine. So the ship doesn't get a disease like outbreak. Yeah. yeah. So it's crazy because people actually went in quarantine off the idea that the test of a gamut of a system that's phantom a fa and all the things that are out there. There's so many things or you heard it from this person. Oh my God, I got this. You should make sure. You do, right, and it just spreads like wildfire, and it creates, especially beings who are really terrified. Which I don't know. Maybe it's like beings who I don't know what place in human design that would be that would create the thing of fear or the open spleen. It'd be an open spleen. Forty-five percent of humanity has an open or undefined spleen, which means they don't necessarily have that very clear inner mechanism that says this is healthy and safe. This is not. So with that being open, like you were saying, we don't know what to be afraid of. And so we look outside of ourselves for that information, for that mental knowledge on what we should be afraid of. And a lot of times that's us just programming that open spleen with more things to be afraid of. And that creates anxiety and more, you know, static within that system that's really designed to keep us healthy and safe. That's interesting because I have a defined spleen and everything I've ever been terrified of never was true. So my panic disorder, I thought I had, I at one point thought I maybe had AIDS. I remember at one point I told my doctor I thought I had cancer. I thought I had brain cancer because I was having so many panic attacks, right? So after all the tests and after all the time, it was like, you don't have anything. So whatever I ever thought I had was, or whatever I thought I researched on the internet or what somebody else told me, and they were like, it, it felt like this. And I'm like, well, I feel like that too. And also it was always wrong. It was always my mind creating this whole crazy fucking story. And that was seven years I've been in therapy to learn how to realize, man, I could trip myself out over things that I already know I don't have that, but I'm just like, I heard it or I saw it or I did it. Da, 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 da. And your unconscious is line one, which is the in investigator, the introspective. And as we move through this last phase of the cross of planning, you know, the procession of the equinoxes and the cycles kind of goes reverse. So we're in a first line phase right now. We're looking at everything through this introspective need for detail. And if we don't have that coming from within on an introspective level, then we're going to ask somebody else, you know, what is the information that's vital and practical that I need to know? Mm. And that's the mark of this first line phase. As soon as we tip into 2027, 20, we're going to move into a six line phase where it's all about the inner source knowing from the beingness of who you are based on the integrity that you live in to nourish and keep yourself aligned. And so knowing that, we have to kind of be prepared for the six line phase that's coming and equip ourselves with that inner knowledge that sometimes is not logical, is not rational, does not satisfy the mind on that informational level that it's looking for in a first line phase and know that those are the ones that are going to rise, the ones that have been taking the information, the knowledge and the 
the guidance and the intuitive navigation of this experience from the inner authority. Right, because it's almost like it reminds me of, because I am that subconscious one line, for me, it's been like, is it worth going in this information unless it's kind of where the numbers don't make sense is where I like to dig, mm -hmm. right? So like when you take the last two years, it was just like, the numbers aren't there to be freaked out about this, right? But now when I see the numbers of excess deaths that are just going through the roof or the numbers of people that have been affected by the injection, or I look at when the numbers are like, wait, what? I'm not going to digest the information that's from the mainstream. I'm going to digest the information that's coming from who's questioning the numbers that don't make sense mm -hmm. to a mainstream narrative or to an information that's supposed to be all truth, mm -hmm. but it's really false. And when you take so many, whether it's diseases or anything, when you actually look at like, I'll look at, I'll look up something and I'll go, how many people can contract this a year, right? Because they'll make it be like, this is very common, right? Like the common f cold or even the common flu, right? Or anything. When you actually dig the numbers down or like the idea of HIV, right? The, I, the way, the, uh, if you are a heterosexual male or female, your percentage chance of get, tr contracting HIV is down to 0.02. When I tell that to people, they still don't believe it. They're freaked out. I'm like, unless you were having sex with your same, you know, especially males, if males are having sex with males, guess what? That's like the flip side. Now you're like in 70, 80% chance of getting it opposed to 0.02, mm. right? So it's like people are believing such crazy things. They feared everybody with AIDS for years, right? Mm -hmm. Including there was, there was actual People Magazine and Time Magazine in 1986, this is like four years after it happened, like everybody will get, it has a, like a third, a third of the population will get AIDS. That never happened. Same thing they did with this or same thing they're doing with the phantom stuff now. Oh yeah, no, this is what it is. And if we're in this one line to finish out till 2027, imagine how much anxiety there is for so many that are literally just not going, let me actually ask and do the research myself a little bit. And let me actually get and dig down to find a base to where it's like, this actually makes more sense instead of taking the first bite and taking, it, it, it reminds me of the, the apple in Snow White, right? From the evil queen. Like it's people have become Snow White and Oh, that's a nice apple. But a 5-1, I would be literally in my one line. I'd be like, why are you a crazy weird witch with a fucking huge fucking wart and on your nose that's offering me a beautiful apple? And you're just offering me this apple? I don't know you and I don't know what the hell this is. And I'd be like, where'd you come from? Where'd you, you know, before I ate it. It's like that scene in Men in Black where they're going through like the, the live test and all the little oh, like, yeah. pop-ups are coming and he's like testing him to see which one he's going to shoot. And then the little girl, you know, out right. cut out pops up and he blasts it. And like one of, I mean, one of the people are like, what are you doing? No, no, no. And then he's like, no, that's how we know he's the one because he didn't just take it at surface value. Right. He, because that little girl was holding on to some weird thing. I forgot. It was like a bomb yeah, or something uh -huh, like that. Yeah. So that's the level of discernment we really have to be embodying at this time is like, yeah, it may look like 90% of what you're seeing looks like it's leading into a certain truth, but there is still that 10% of details that is giving it away. I mean, even taking the, the Russia Ukraine situation, right? It's like the first thing that came out was about the bio labs, right? And then every, everybody was like, no. No, and then they had to like retract and be like, well, yeah, I mean, there are bio labs here, and all the sites that Russia targeted were the bio lab sites. So it was kind of like, what's really going on? It's not the. If, let's be real. Russia is a huge country with a massive military. If they wanted to take over Ukraine right away, and it would be, it would be overnight. already done. Yeah, it'd be done. 
Yeah. I mean, we took over Saddam Hussein in Iraq in a day and a half. It was pretty simple. So the idea that we can't take over Ukraine or they can't take over Ukraine, there's a lot more going on, right? That instead of just taking it as like, oh, the, the Russians are having a tougher time, like, you know, like, da, 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 da. yeah, and the Ukrainians are doing great. But it's like everything right now is like people are just, and I think this is what that phantom energy is doing is it's creating fear. And to buy the phantom program that there's an alternative alternative way to get through it which is really not it's false it's taking you into places where then years later they go well sorry that's really not the way think of antibiotics for example right like yeah just throw everything in antibiotics now it's created super bacterias that no antibiotics can treat because p people who take them too much and da -da 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 -da, right it, it there's no other way to do it right so it's kind of like all these systems are all coming at the same time that were phantom that built the phantom matrix itself. It goes a lot longer than people realize. It's not like, oh, it's just because of this shot or just because of it. It's been building on top of the piggybacks of human souls that were naive enough to fall for it and our ancestors that fell for it to where, whether it's Native American tribes that knew how to not, fuck this, you know what I mean? And indigenous people that were like, we're not taking on that system. We're talking to our ancestors right now and they're saying, yeah, no, 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 don't do it. <laughs> we weren't trained that in the Western world. We weren't trained that work. Mm -hmm. So it's the, the phantom matrix at this point and the phantom galaxy we just saw the picture of has been piggybacked off the naivety of so many souls that just keep buying it on WebMD of this and that and freak out on what this is, what Netflix just showed me, and I'm gonna do this because I, that's what it says to do, and I'm a bad person if I do, don't do that. I'm gonna be on Black Lives Matter and go protest because if I don't, I'm a horrible human being. If I don't change my gender right now, <laughs> you know, it's just like, wait, what? Like, you know, like everything has been, the equation has just got its powerful compression, <laughs> The same way that we have reached on the other side, though, the compression of the opening to this new universe. Mm -hmm. So they're throwing in the other one and people are kind of like, I'm supposed to go with the fall of the empire. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to go with the fall and the destruction. I'm supposed to do this and to stay alive, I'll be on that. I will turn my body right now without even realizing it into a transactional way to survive and get my little universal basic income every month and i will put my hand into the fucking needle fest to transact because even in the you know manifestos that are publicly released that outline the plans for the great reset there is this strong understanding that displacement will be the biggest crisis of this era meaning that the events that will be concocted and the narratives that will be sold to us will eventuate into us being priced out of our own existence. Things will be literally too expensive for us to live. And so will be, our hand will be forced into this phantom bargain into accepting, you know, total surrender of our life force in order to just exist. And that's totally how we can see that crashing down of the cross of planning and the cross of planning being all about this tribal bargain saying, if you play your role for the tribe, you'll receive the protection and support of the tribe and we'll all survive together. But if you break that bond, you're out and you're not going to survive. It's like that is that final clutching on of that bargain that is crumbling saying, if you don't take this from us, if you don't surrender that to us, you're not going to make it through this dark future. And that's the power of, the human collective to manifest something when we get our narrative hijacked. And that's why it's so important to take back your own narrative as a creator, because yeah. each one of us has the ability to generate a reality all our own, but we're, so, we're under so much pressure from conditioning forces, from institutionalized peer pressure to adopt the existing narrative that we literally divulge and give up our very creative capacity Right. to imprint and create our own path, our own destiny, our own fate. Which on the inverse side of that 
okay, like if you don't contribute to the collective, then you're out, right? That's used as a fear. Is that weird glow false light of, well, we'll make you live forever. Like that's what they're doing now, right? So they're starting it with technological injections that are altering your RNA and playing with DNA. And next comes Hydra that we've talked about and infinite mortality. Super, we are going to make you a superhuman, which if we want to go into some kind of crazy star seed shit, the Lumerians are the superhumans that we are the origin of a superhuman already. Yeah. And, it's about- and I think that people forget that with the Pleiades. It's the Lumerians that are where the Palladians are from. It's Lumeria. And Lumeria is the divine superhuman that already, gosh, that would be, I guess, where rave times 10 would be, I guess, or something. Yeah. I mean, those beings of Lemuria, Lumeria were basically the full catalog of all the true organic libraries of all right. the creation families of the cosmos, all, all in one. And that was the original intention of Earth, was to be a living the library. living library. Yep. And because of the openness of the open source, basically genetic code of those original beings, and because it was created in such love and such just, you know, love doesn't do anything but attract. Love doesn't really right. push anything away. It is a self-organizing system. And it had so much of that good intended love behind it that it was even open to accepting huge amounts of hijacking and alteration. And it's all about realizing that originally, in our original blueprint, we are eternal beings, you know, here to regenerate and also demanifest our physical bodies at will and return to source at will as we complete our experiences in form. And now that's being sold back to us in an inverted way as immortality, which is not the same as being eternal, which is our true nature. Immortality is about harvesting your energy from something else living in order to sustain an unnatural lifespan. Whereas our true nature and the true capacity of and the ultimate goal of ascension is to return our DNA to that original template that allows us to connect to source and do full body transmutation. And that's what ascension really is. We've been right. trying to get back to that. And at every turn, we're sold a false inverted narrative to try and get us to manifest the very opposite of our true design. Right. Like, I mean, I, I know it's a, a very minute thing, especially after such a beautiful sermon that you just put. But the electric car thing, right? So it's like they're pushing that so hard. And, you know, in California, that it all, no more gasoline engines, you know, by 2035. Or I think it's 2030 here and everybody else is going to do 2035, right? But that's putting everybody on an electric car that you have to plug into power that's coming from fossil fuels, <laughs> but where they can just shut off the power, right? Like, oh, sorry, no, no, no power today. And- and then what happens? Now you can't drive your car. Now you can't go anywhere. And people are like falling for the, yes, this is good for the <laughs> environment as they're going to be pushing more. Or the idea like here where we live, the power plant down in San Onofre, when they cut that off, that created way more. So if you're really into this, the carbon dioxide, right? That created more to go out in the atmosphere because you're cutting off the clean energy that there was, right? So it's crazy because that's how it's done, right? Like, look at this and yay. And then these people, I mean, even like the way that people are like thinking they're cool and trendy because they have an electric car, right? Like even our, even these false phantom people you see in the media and our governments right now are like saying it like, gosh, you know, on this summer, I heard this just this last week, they're doing this in Congress and shit. Oh yeah, you know, the summer I had, I just drove here to Washington from Chicago, where I'm, you know, from. And it was so nice passing all those gas stations that were so expensive. And I just looked at him and waved at him like, I don't need to worry about that. Well, then they just like, kind of like, go like, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Like everybody's like, yeah, because you're in on the club too. And that's what they're doing. Like, if you're not in this club and you don't have that, then you're not trendy. You're not cool. Like you have a gasoline engine. Jeez. Which is funny because that's more natural from the earth. Like that's a conversation that people are kind of not having. The earth knows what to do with some carbon 
exhaust. It's, it's not really that well, big. Well, in the deal. exchange between oxygen from humans and then trees. Mm -hmm. That's like the deepest relationship is the fact that we ourselves give out carbon monoxide, right? And then the trees live off that and produce oxygen. And replenish the soil. And replenish, and, right? And it's like, do you really want your whole existence to just be one continuous virtue signaling parade? Fa phantom, phantom signaling. <laughs> phantom fanfare. Right? Because <laughs> in audio, there's phantom power, which means like, oh, I want to add this kind of idea that this source has the power to give the audio cords power to like these. So phantom power is running these, mm -hmm. right? But it's only at that one place that has the power, mm -hmm. right? Not allowing these to have their own power. And that's what's happening is you're going to be so not a in. place that can let out your voice, let out your nature, let out your truth, but we can scream what we want into you. You accept it. And you're transmuting all that for us into our central system. And that's all you're allowed to do is just be corded into that system in matrix one. When Morpheus talks about it, I just rewatched it the other night. So it blew my mind. Cause I forgot this line is when he said, I saw the fields for myself. Mm. And when I saw the, compo the, com the compositing of the dead being intravenously fed to the living in the way that when all the dead bodies in the pods would die and the fluids would go and then they showed the f he said that we are no longer born we are grown mm -hmm. and now they're all grown in the fields and then when you see the baby laying there with all the cords in and all the intravenous fluid coming in they don't show, of course, a dead body, but because that would be pretty extreme for that movie at that moment. But it's like they show that that's what he means is that they're the dead are feeding the living, the living are feeding the dead, which is not how humanity works. It's a closed loop, right? It is a closed loop that's creating a giving power, its own power literally away fully mm -hmm. to be used by another source fully and then completely masked away from even understanding it and living in an illusion. And the, the scary part to me is also, you know, in that movie, I think his name was Cypress or, Cy or whatever. He was the one who was like, I want to go back. So he makes a deal with the agents and says, I want to eat steak again. And, and you know what? I don't want to remember anything. And I make me somebody popular, like, like an actor or something, whatever you want. Like they don't care. They're just like, you're not, you, they don't even, you don't even know the bigger plan. You think you're going to go back here and this is going to be this. The matrix only lasts so long. Like their programs only last so long. It's kind of like Y2K. The computers flipped the fuck out in Y2K because guess what? The, the, when they built these things in the 60s, 70s and 80s, it was like, oh yeah, that's 20 years away, 2000. Like just write the, just make the calendars in these computers just go to 1999, December 31st. Let's figure out 2000 when we get to 2000. But every system was going to fall apart because it would have clicked to 1900 financial, all that shit. So every matrix or the idea that our reality, the way it is right now, people are, they're trying to keep this as this is how life will be forever. Mm -hmm. That we'll have cars, we'll have transactions, we'll have money, we'll have a phone, you know, you can do this. People are not realizing evolution that it, we're supposed to be like wheel of fortuneing, like the, the, the whole turning of the wheel. And it's like, we, they don't want the wheel turning. They want you to stay in this, encapsulate you into it, and then pull you like out of the wheel and take you to, I hate to say it, but like, fuck, the, the like devil card and fucking chain you to the base and just thank you. So I had a super cool dream experience about this plan. And it was shown to me as a timeline that exists in a very short window between 2017 and 2024. And it was showing me, I was kind of looking back in time and I was also experiencing the year 2024 and what the world would look like in this Zeta ruled society. And it was that, yes, the quality of life in terms of the Western world was very high. You know, people were living in big, like, 
penthouse apartment kind of things in these empty buildings in Manhattan, for example, huge sky rises, high rises, but it was like 16 people to an apartment. And everybody in those, you know, public housing basically was fed this kind of propaganda that was all about pumping each other up and everyone always affirming each other. You're so good. This is great. You were born for this. This is amazing. So everyone is being fed this constant false positivity. And at the same time, there's this sense of if you fall out of line, well, you don't want to do that. So they come around and they do these welfare checks to each of these overcrowded apartments and they come in with like their focus groups and it's both Zetas and human, you know, employees basically of the Zetas. They come in and they make you do testing and they kind of put a bunch of products in front of you or a bunch of like tools or shapes and they have you just fill out these questionnaires and choose, you know, different little option based tests just to just to siphon off your human response. Just so that these Zetas, these soulless disconnected beings can learn what it feels like to have choice, what it feels like to have a preference, because they're trying to themselves build back their consciousness to being able to be in that free will hey, universe. Hey, build back better. And it was basically like I was in this apartment and everybody <laughs> was like, you're perfect for this. You're perfect for this. And I'm thinking like, this is awful. Like you can't even leave the apartment without, and as soon as everyone walks in, like these employees, you had to put the mask on to make sure that you were in line, even though there's no threat. And it was almost like, yep, and we're gonna keep this 2017 to 2024 loop going again and again and again and again and just keep everyone in this small window of the Western world of just consumerism. That's what the matrix products. was though. Yeah. Do you remember that? Yeah. That, that all the people that were trapped it's almost like where's Waldo page that everybody's in this little like container and that's it. But in, in the, the matrix, it was always just the city. Mm -hmm. Like you never thought like, do they realize they could go like all over the world or anything? It was always the, just, just the very high the end Western thing that they are doing everywhere along the planet. Mm -hmm. And the other weird part that you bring up about, this data it reminds me of like what we've seen for the last you know decade of programming right like it started in sports with kids oh there's no losers it's a tie or they told both kids teams you won and i remember parents going crazy like what the fuck like why can't we just tell these kids lost it teaches them that it's okay to lose but at the same time to make you want to win or whatever so it's like that might seem minuscule but that's where it gets up to of like oh no you're great it reminds me of in school when i took the test what are you going to be when you grow up i'm supposed to be a forest ranger that's against my human design to go well that's what the test says so i'm going to go do that that was the last thing that i went and did in my life right or even me joining the navy was not a choice that was made from my gut and my response it was a choice because i saw navy commercials i was a top gun fanatic and Metallica was playing music and jets were landing on fucking F-14s at that time and F-18s were landing on the fucking aircraft carrier and it was like, go Navy with Metallica. I'm like, well, that looks like a better option than the fucking, I'm gonna go be a forest ranger. Right. I don't even know how to be a forest ranger. What, what do you do? Who do you go to? So it was easy, walk into a Navy your recruitment center and join up. That people have no idea right now the programming that's going on to make people also be okay with being so sensitive that there has to be a point to where you can't just play the sensitive card all day like my gender like my this my that it creates a beta society which is in you think of the terms a beta plan right the beta is always the test software for developers mm -hmm. so when you see beta energy and it's in males and females out there you are an indoctrined beta test subject to the system because of your sensitivities because that you can't handle the things on your own and they're testing you to make you so sensitive that oh yeah and everybody happy yeah it's great there's 10 genders now that just came out today <laughs> that they're teaching in schools. I didn't even know these names, they're new ones. And I'm like, oh my God, 
now it's people identifying as fucking just like shit that doesn't even exist no origin and the more that we're separated from the core construct of you know our true binary code the more room there is for parasitic invasion of these subcategories of so-called gender you know the more right. separate you are from the true template the easier it is for that being to be hijacked because there's just more space. There's more separation from the truth, essentially. And by presenting these options to forming consciousness who are raised to be sensitive and so tuned in to like every little emotional upheaval is a prescription for a life change. It's just, you know, reinforcing people to yeah, choose something completely unnatural because then you're more beta than ever. You're more able to yeah. be hijacked, infested, controlled, and completely just used. In I mean, the system. like the, the way that they're, you know, creating these corporate workplaces now where it's like, everybody, let's have, you know, you need your break in the in this area where we've got everything you need and we'll have somebody there to talk to you about your problems and da 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 da. I think that's great in some ways, but at the other token, life teaches us through in natural if we were in the forest 5000 years ago, you choose to climb that tree and you fall, that's how the universe teaches you. That fucking cut on your fucking arm, male or female, teaches you that burn by the fire teaches you that we are living in the bubble wrap society now where anything that happens is no don't we need to keep putting more bubble on you we need to keep putting more of this because that be, being somebody in development and computers for so long beta has always been the beta do you want to be part of the beta program like you want to try the beta software and those are for the a a more a, like conscious. So if you think of it from a computer, right? Or an AI, right? Like who are the people that want to try the beta to see the programs where it fails and works and so forth? That's what it really means. So it's like, I'm on the insider windows program. So I always get the beta of the new windows. So it's more stuff that I can do. And then literally send a report if something breaks, go, yeah, the, it broke this this is the code that is causing it to malfunction and then windows takes that and then they do that for six months later what everybody else will get so if you think of the beta society that has been created right now where everything is just a walking fucking landmine to people when it's as simple as okay that person was a bad relationship let go relax there's i hate to say it for humanity, for thousands of years, there's been wars. There's been fucking people in the tribe that were bad, but that's why there were shamans that would literally bring everybody together and call it out. Mm -hmm. You called it out and you didn't let people walk away and run away and do all that shit. You, everybody come here and we're calling this out right now and everybody got it. And then that's where the compassion went by after the calling it out, not compassion, that it's okay that you did that and let them run away and let them go and fucking into hell. You never did that. Now they're letting people do that and then running into hell and saying, in hell is where we'll capture you with more bubble or phantom. But that's the problem is right now, I feel like we are at a place to where people, so, and I, and I love Teal Swan, but she put something out that a friend sent to me and I know they're going through shit and it was like, Teal said, well, if somebody would just went through a car accident, you wouldn't go up to them and ask them for something because that's a very extreme moment. And I thought, oh, you know, that's kind of an interesting place. But I just felt, I was like, you know what? No, it's not. It's an excuse. I fucking blew up my car at 80 miles an hour, broke my ribs. The fucking car was on fire, got knocked out for 15 fucking seconds, got pulled out of the car, blew up the fucking car, fucking walked out dealt with the cops, dealt with the police, dealt with the fucking tow people, the car is totaled, brushed my shit off and said the mission has to go on and got on this fucking stage a little out of it and fucking did deep astrology and then moved on. I fell out of a third story fire escape, smashed my face into the concrete and called my own ambulance, got myself yeah. to the hospital and took care of all that. Like, but that's, that's MG stuff. 
Um, maybe, maybe, and, <laughs> and, 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 I, and I, but I feel like when half the population are generators, mm -hmm. and you're dealing with 70%. gender stuff, and you're dealing with too much sensitivity, it's your sacral energy that is the fire of the fuck yes in life. So if it's the programming of you just went through something bad, don't keep doing anything. Stop. Stop. But as a generator, if you're having a fuck yes, that's, that's probably the best way to heal you instead of the, I need to program and release and sit. And, and it could be any moment. You have to live in the moment, not the programmed, this happened, so now you go into timeout spiritually. And if you don't do that, then you're not woke. And that's phantom too. You went through a bad relationship. You shouldn't be with anybody for a long time. You're in timeout. You're in timeout. That's not how half the population with sacral energy works. Because the life force has an intelligence all its own that right. knows how to sustain life. Correct. No matter what the mind is saying. And that's the kind of energy that we need to tap into as a population in order to sustain true organic life. And that stuff does not stop for the reasoning of the mind. That right. doesn't stop for mental conditioning. It runs the show. It is the energy. So if we are stopping ourselves from a mental place, from our life force actually running this show properly, then phew, you're done at that point. You're a walking beta. That's not, uh, and that's what, that's what the zombie feeling is like, because there's no life force at that point. The mind's running the show. Mm -hmm. The programmed condition. Pro now it's a new one. It's a, the program is fully initiated. Whereas like the programming was happening. It's like, we're at a stage where there's no more programming. Now the program's updating. The program is becoming self-realized. Right, which is what happened in the matrix. It's when AI became that self-realized that the war started or in Terminator, it became self-realizing that, uh oh, these beings that created me are gonna use me and make me fucking slaves. Bye-bye, fire the bombs on them because we'll survive. Mm -hmm. They won't. Mm -hmm. And that's what people don't get. They're feeding into the mate, the fall, the phantom. They're, I hate to say it, they're using their sacral, a phantom of the opera, mystical. Like, in, if you were to take the phantom of the opera today and put that into reality, every woman should fucking literally cancel phantom of the opera. The motherfucker is a dark being who wears a mask, who can't reveal his truth, and is too shy and two beta, but playing weird fucking games to attract you sexually because I love you. <laughs> and that shit's going around a lot. And that shit's fucking dark as fuck and taking people's life force because it's false and it, I'm unsure how to respond. And let me be okay because the program says that, you know, it's okay if somebody is too afraid to show who they are. It's okay if they're dark and mysterious they're even trying to say that people who are pedophiles now should be changed to a new identification now that they like young ones i forgot what the term is but that they're just somebody into young people but having harsh truth in words this is where my heretics coming out calling somebody a pedophile is a good thing because if they are one it's a taint on the word of the, the person, because they are fucking that. If you're a murderer, you're a fucking murderer. You're not a person who killed somebody because you've, you were like having it. a bad day. Like, you know what I mean? Right. So that's where the program's creating all those wokeville and people are fucking falling for it like every day. And all the they're anxiety- They're not a murderer, they're just death positive. Yeah, they're death positive. <laughs> they're part of the death and cabal plus plus community <laughs> you know what i mean like that's what's crazy is you, when you bring up the life force in the community that needs to be enacted it is not mental at all at all it is full response to love it is full response to a fuck yes it is full response to what we truly desire that shows up that's a oh my gosh this is it there's and, no and it just it eviscerates the mental it because as soon as that cellular right. fuck yes shows up, the mind is like just flattened against the wall because it is no match for 
the life force, the very force that's built everything in this world. Which is the superhuman evolutionary markers for us to reach. And when there's more generators than there are any other, mm -hmm. it's the generators that that's the job mm -hmm. to not fall for the plan and to bring us to the new sleeping Phoenix where we can be guided. But because I was thinking of how we talked about projectors being, you know, easily because of their org field and condition, think of the conditioning going on right now. And you had brought up before the show or right, before, right, like just right before we went live. It's almost like we've talked about the raves, but what about these AI like super raves or something like their own version of raves, which is shot to shit weird. Like, as you said, they would come out looking a little bit more abnormal and stuff. It's mm -hmm. almost like they're creating like, see, you know, here they are abnormal. They don't have an eye. It's hanging on the side. Like, you know what I mean? Like they don't have this because the of the beta raves, the beta raves. Exactly. And that's something that we're going to see so many examples of is that in a bifurcated timeline reality for every positive, for every truth, for every light, for every evolution, there's going to be something matching and opposite of that on the descending timeline. But the descending one is probably going to be the more obvious, mm -hmm. the more the, there's going to be more narrative pumped out around being accepting of these, whatever they are. And I think that they're going to probably concoct a way for, you know, the quantum computing capacity to be run through the human right. modem, you know, to create similar capabilities of what the raves represent and maybe even try and prevent the true raves from being able to do what their job is, which is to stabilize the morphogenetic field to the extent that no conditioning, no glamoring, no illusion can be perpetrated anymore. Because when a rave shows up, you know, well, when three raves show up together, their field is so strong that they have access to direct manifestation. You can't convince somebody with that level of consciousness anything because they have direct access to source, to pure consciousness. And so, of course, they're going to try and come up with something that matches that in power to either distract, you know, the attention away from the true organic evolution or counteract it by having some similar capability of taking even more consciousness over somehow. And it's probably going to be through those beings who are tied into the Internet of Bodies. Which that Internet of Bodies is very interesting because in human design it's about knowing the mechanics right it's not so much about a belief it's not so much about you know a concept a concept right it's almost changing the mechanics and then creating this internet of bodies which are not running off the mechanics and being retooled mm -hmm. literally mm -hmm. where you will not have access to your natural connection to the ethereal at all but the program which actually i can't believe honestly the react if I, I really want to look up one day the human design of the wachecki brothers that created the matrix mm. because and i know they're sisters now they've changed genders and a lot of it they said was for trans mutation right like you can get out of it but i think it's interesting that they responded to make that movie series and it's so exactly the closest representation of what is happening literally right now and the internet of bodies would be the idea of putting people in pods the same way that you look at pods being virtual reality glasses when you have meta right and you have mark zuckerberg stepping out into the front with that it's like all the pieces are all being put into play to make this false library of so when we have the living library that comes from the lumerian energy which directly correlates to palladian energy which is why the earth was made to be a living library of all the systems and all the living libraries that basically earth is the only place with everything like an elephant to a human to a plant to whatever it's all here this is the living library of the universe because when you i think you go out farther and farther in this universe you'll realize it's just a bunch of junk created 
shit from a bunch of beings that thought they were God and didn't follow the divine plan and tried to create. And it's just a bunch of junk fields to me. I look at a lot of it as junk fields. Yeah, it's a mess that hasn't been cleaned up. It doesn't, it's a mess that hasn't been cleaned up. And now they're spiraling it into, look at it. This is the place where we're going to, that it's taking you to. It's taking you to a junkyard of human transhumanism. But the, but the interesting part is that if we are at a human design standpoint and we look at it, that library will be a mechanic retooled false living library of memories from retooled re-engineered human minds not heart and not soul but like the idea of that i had fun shopping because i was having a bad day or like everything that you go against your design with your authority and your strategy being in that living library that right. that will become normal and that's why i think in 2027 ross says that the access to actual truth will be gone because the library that truth will be, you know, based on will be the not self library. It'll be a complete non self library. Mm -hmm. Like all the, like, you know what? I wanted to respond to that amazing project I wanted to create, but that's just not the best thing to do because it could affect the sensitivity of others. Don't offend anyone or your social credit score will go down. Exactly. So it's a false self. Like I could have gone for this amazing love and found the relationship in my dreams and built a family and relationship. But you know what? That's creating such a bad imprint on society. I need to prove my worth as my individual self because that's like anybody who does create a family or falls in love is weak because I still have to prove that I have to reach the tallest mountain and everybody will like me. I've got Lily Wachowski's human design. Oh, let's look at it. Because she actually made four by herself. And interestingly here, well, we have the portrait here. And we see that it's a four or six opportunistic role model. Or was it Lily? That's, no, the other one. Lana, I think, is the Lana one that did made four. The four. We don't yeah. have Lana's chart right now. But... but we can see that at least something in here that inspired this original trilogy was actually Qua quadrity or I don't know. Um, yeah. Quadrilogy. Oh, well he was part of, or she was part of the, uh, you know, he, she was part of the, the trilogy. And it's interesting that we have a being born on the cross of service mm. and how these movies, so-called, you know, feature films are actually, probably of huge service to humanity. There is a judgment of the pattern that each cross of service being brings into the world because cross of service is one of these crosses that has a full channel no matter what. And this is the 1858, the channel of judgment, which is all about realigning values to fundamental human rights and about being able to logically judge the patterns of life and work and being and society this is a collective energy so it's about correcting things you know and sharing those solutions and judging that are rooted forever in our humanity right right it's in the root yeah to the spleen to keep surviving too right right that if we go off those if we, we go off that survive. path and it's not mammalian yeah <laughs> Or actually, I thought it was interesting to, that, that he has the channel of mating, which to me is interesting that he brought up about how the, I mean, actually both. I mean, if you think of Neo and Trinity and their love, but, but the, he wasn't part of four, but okay. But the creation of the fucking, the computer's fucking mating with humans to create them as batteries right because the channel of mating is when we just break it down outside of the human biology it's really a place where energies that are very different from each other come together in union and it's about the intelligence of the sacral to be able to blend very differing frequencies and to form something new out of it and that's like the friction that's creating new life in human reproduction but it's also about taking anything that's different from 
something else and forcing it together into a new form. So look at that throat shock center completely undefined with no gates, which I'm just going to be very real right now. Uh, I'm being a heretic tonight. The movies are so amazing, but seeing his undefined ego center, his undefined throat, it's almost like becoming a woman is what they used for their own per like the movies and to get famous with the real story then turned into their own story of their own trans story and that he always never got to express himself the way he really wanted to and also the way that that movie was so riveting because of the fact the special effects the way that they did it at that time that it was like they were really big nerds that really like prove to the world like this is the way to do movies right mm -hmm. and everybody copied after that like mm -hmm. that kind of three to 60 camera shit and all that stuff but it's like the, the the narrative in the media for people who really are not matrix fans right like took over that well yeah they're what chucky brothers are turning into wachowski brothers are turning into sisters now and then they even did the documentaries about their transition and their life as transitioning. And then they made the whole core of the movies later about being about that you can transcend everything. So right. it's weird that I hate to say this, but I feel that they got put in the system. So it's like to me, it feels like it's very a bargain. It was yes. almost like even if this is completely unconscious to these people, you know, as who they know themselves to be. There was almost like an exchange saying, yeah, we'll let you put this out, but you're gonna have to sacrifice everything that you are in, in kind of like payment for the sacrifice that you're making. Mm -hmm. And we do have the 49th gate in play here, which is all about, you know, changing the body or changing the principles around the body in the form isn't that the sleeping phoenix channel basically where that comes um, in no but it is part of it is part of where where we're going with the sleeping phoenix because that 49 right. is what's dying out basically got you and i mean that's just the first thing intuitively that i got it was almost like we're going to very subtly and in slow motion make an example out of you and you can stay here you can keep yourself alive we're not going to full-on kill you but you're gonna to have to sacrifice everything that you came into this life as, as punishment for bringing this level of truth into the mainstream. I don't know, that's just how I think maybe, but. Well, no, it makes sense to me because I, I've always thought of how it all got inverted because it makes no sense. The idea of the matrix itself and what they are doing and even what they show in matrix four is that it was divine union between masculine and feminine that broke their program mm -hmm. that they, they tried to separate them so much that every time they touched, fuck the whole system broke. Mm -hmm. So he, they, they were like, but they had to keep them just close enough, but to where they couldn't keep them touching to make them so frustrated and to keep them all like, ah, like to keep the batteries so high producing, right? That then these two who create this series create this whole opposite of what they're against in many ways in the movies. The movies would be like, if they those characters themselves as who wrote it were in the movies, they'd be like, sorry, it's not how it works down here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like you're, you're on that, you're on the fucking computer side. Mm -hmm. I know I, I just was heretic, well, that was a heretic moment, that, but I don't care because that it makes no, it's, there's common sense at this point. And I'm like, there's just no common sense for their idea of teaching people that you can transcend anything through breaking through the matrix, which I get through them saying that they can transcend their physical bodies, but with human design, there is a mechanics to it. There is a divine order. There's a divine order. And I feel that that's, and there's no need to go against that really, unless you have extreme distortion in your mental body that's convincing you otherwise. And that's part of what conditioning is. Because they were brothers when they made the first Matrix, and then they released two and three like back to back. I don't know if you remember, that was what was kind of crazy, was it was not like we waited. It was like, here, we're doing two, and then week later, three comes out. And that was a huge moment. Like, 
think of the box office. Like, oh shit, I can watch two and then two weeks later, three? Yeah. I remember that feeling of like, right. Oh. And it made it like matrix month. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was really cool, but it was after all that, that, that all their weird stuff. And then to the point to where they, we don't know the real reason why they don't really talk to not do this next film. Right. That, you know, cause I think it would be the other one, not, not Lily, uh, whatever her name is that did it. But it seems to me like the way that she was very involved in that movie, I almost feel like, maybe they became trans and they regret it because the way that they put so much emphasis on the masculine and feminine, the love in the fourth one is breaking the matrix. It's almost like with that undefined throat, maybe he was too afraid. Lily was too afraid to face that shit. Like, mm -hmm. I don't want to face that. You know, I don't want to have to embody that. I'm okay with my trans moment in myself where I have transcended into what I thought was my own reality, which you kind of can't do alone. And I don't think that we are going to be able to do it alone. Of course, you have to know who you are in the next series, but of, of where we're going in 2027. But I feel like you have to, uh, oh, fuck. Yeah, it's like creating this be on your own and transcend your body and your ability to connect or create and create your own weird lonely life i don't know but i feel that that's where we're at kind of is at the moment where matrix 4 is a premonition to the updated matrix that uses people to feel separate from their natural order and love and stress to create more harvest energy. Mm -hmm. And this is where you can see it already been happening if you're awake. And the phantom now picture of the matrix reminds me of how I use Tom Hanks as kind of a signature or that something was about to happen. Well, we're at the point where the, the point that that picture shown up the same time that this new up date to the shot is happening this is going to be the first shot that is with a new variant meaning that they're using a completely new coding that they're ready to install this shit this fall with the eclipses with all the intense energy with pluto ending at this last, what is it, the 61st gate? It's 61st, then 60 gate? Is that how it works? 61, then 60. Yeah. Right? So Pluto went back to the 61st gate right now. And it's like, let's get ready to install that restrictive element deeply into people and embed it in the root of their initial divine programming and get to the root of their divine programming. That's what's scary to me about Pluto at the end of Capricorn here at the 60th gate is it's reprogramming from the root to the sacral. Mm -hmm. Core mutation. And I just want to share this quick screenshot that it literally one of the sects, one of the families of the draconians are called the Omicrons. The and, Omicron draconians. And they're literally, yeah satanic forces from orion that are really about operating on sexual misery programming basically inverting our gender polarity binary that gives rise to the creative principle and turning that against us or it could even be how there's like hookup culture today and no love like right where mm -hmm. just people are just aimlessly like hooking up and then no love and then that's sexual misery because sex without love and having that eternal connection is misery it is and it's also a, a that um you know ungrounded from the core template of love that sexual union becomes another just hijackable portal essentially because when you put two and two we wanted you know you put the two male and female principle together it opens a portal and that's what the womb is it's a portal from the higher dimensions to bring new souls through it's actually your ancestors that are incarnating through you and so and it opens the portal to heaven right to heaven but if there isn't that <laughs> love backing behind it if there isn't that core love principle behind it it becomes just a portal for anything 
Oh, no, I know from personal experience. It opens the portal to heaven. It's fucking crazy. But it takes the willingness to both parties to be awake and open and not tainted into that mm -hmm. spell. Mm -hmm. Because, it, and it's the feminine that opens it up too. Mm -hmm. Like the masculine can do everything it can to get to that place, but the door has to open. Right, From it's not feminine. that the sperm yeah. forces its way into the right. egg. The yeah. egg chooses and opens selectively for the correct match. Right. But to see, not even, well, I can see it, but to say, and for the understanding of what you're saying is so extremely, I think, terrifying, is those Omicron draconian beings to create sexual misery in the moment of a sexual union can hijack. Yeah. <laughs> and who knows what they're creating in that portal or bringing things through the portal where usually it's more like things coming into the portal. Like it's almost like going into God, going into heaven, going into that. This is more like but in the inverted reality, the inverted reality, bringing something in through you and, Especially if your DNA is hooked up to the phantom matrix, then right. that input is not going to create conditions conducive to organic life being reproduced. Which is why this, the testosterone levels are so down or fertility rates are down. But I think it's much deeper than that to where it's creating the misery mm -hmm. that people feel. And it creates a false sacral response to even the fear of like actually creating the misery of like well i don't know if i should ever be with anybody because it creates fear in people too right it's so then so it creates much... more people too afraid for love or too afraid to bond and connect so it does both you know right so, so it makes people feel like their limited option is very limited they're limited to that false sacral field that we've spoken on before which is really just about you know the wasting of the life force and like mutual masturbation more than it is actually about union. Right. And that goes deep into like the intention behind that. And you know, all the energy and programming and intent that you have in your aura going into that. And also the sacral being a hub of the life force, which is an intelligence. And if there's even more trauma and more confusion and more mixed up energy being connected to that center, then it's even harder for us to tap into our core intelligence as sacral beings. Right, because it can create the fear of that trauma happening again when it's a good thing, or it could do the opposite where it looks like this is good, but really it's replaying the trauma again. Mm -hmm. Right, so it's like it creates not an intelligent form, it creates kind of like a dummy fool card, like, I don't know, like, well, here's to see, you know, cheerio you know or jesus christ when it's like hello this is like you know because people are repelled in this life sometimes by what's too good yeah and then people are repelled by that is too good i want it to be more bad mm -hmm. right there's like there's that that's forming i think in more extreme cases and to get to i think where you're at the natural way it there's a process a divine union isn't just like oh my god we had sex once and it's done you're it it's like it's a cycle. It's, it's a, a cycle and it's like coming back and seeing again and coming back and seeing again and coming back. And if it keeps as a generator, right, the satisfaction should be growing. Right. Building, 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 and building, building. It shouldn't be just like the inverse where it's going away and then trying to pray that it'll feel better the next time because it didn't feel good this time. Right. And that's what I see a lot of that's what a lot of the energy is doing now is like, Let's hope for a miracle that they won't be fucking so crazy to me and energetically make me feel horrible. And da, 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 da. let's just do it again, though, and see. And that's phantom in itself. And also, I think that the idea of the mask, there's like the sacral mask that has been created that looks the illusionary. <sighs> what was that? That was like. No. I just like saw the sacral mask and that, it was that like that orange oh, color yeah. you described yeah, it's exactly. like the candy orange <sighs> is like a sacral mask that looks so good but the second 
you take the mask you off take the mask off it's behind <laughs> it is just a s bunch of sentinels <laughs> exactly you know Tentacles. and there's no door that could actually open into the good it's just a door that got inversed and propped open the other way that they forced forced open to let all that other exit bullshit out and they slip the time continuum system and flipped it in over the f i don't know it's fucking crazy <laughs> i mean so i feel like that's where right now to kind of close this with people i feel like i don't know i mean I, I have my astrology view but in your view human design wise thinking about where we're going with the eclipses coming up the the energy as is as it sits right now how do how do you feel the best way it is for people to not respond to the phantom matrix and how to know that they are responding to a false phantom matrix right now i mean it always goes back to strategy and authority right and that is as simple as it seems and a little bit almost like well that's almost too easy maybe just run down the 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 just the types just real quick and how that would be because sometimes people have to be reminded of it again because they yeah. it's it, it's funny. people get into human design and they think they get more obsessed with the archetype than the meaning of the archetype right they get obsessed with the classification not the application correct so i mean emotional beings you need time you need to not make spontaneous decisions because you your vulnerability is in moving too quickly before the full emotional clarity has arrived. What is emotional clarity? It's giving yourself, it's giving your body time to download the full message that's coming from your soul. Because as emotionally defined beings, you are literally somebody who's equipped with a system, with an architecture that is literally allowing the soul to involve as opposed to evolve, involve into the physical body and communicate with you from within. So it's almost like your spirit is speaking to you through your nervous system, but that message is so vast because your spiritual self is so vast. You need time, you need earthly time to download the full clarity. Yeah, because you could be off, right? You could think something's bad and it's good. You could think something's good and it's bad. Right, because if you take only one moment as the full picture, you're only getting one pixel of the full picture that's downloading for you about what the truth is. So for emotionally defined beings, that's the most common authority across all types. You need to give yourselves time. If you think that's the moment to say yes or no, give yourself more time. You might have been right, but if you aren't, you're going to regret it. Right. So the more space, the more you can realize that if something or somebody cannot wait for you to reach that full emotional clarity, it was That's never right for sign, you. Yeah. It was never right for you in the first place. It's not meant for you. Right. Only the things that come back to you and check again. Hey, are you clear yet? Hey, are you clear yet? Those are the things that truly see you for who you are. Those are the things that have the potential to be correct for you. But only once you've reached that clarity. Right. Because that as an emotional being has to be the one that it kind of reminds me of a feminine energy, right? Is the door opener that will finally say yes. Right. So it's like especially with emotional beings it's it's like that's how i've had to do it and it's just like oh okay yeah all right and sometimes it might take who knows there is no time specific that's the other right. thing yeah it's not what your mind thinks is the timetable right. for it because your mind has no idea your mind is a disembodied consciousness floating above this vehicle these are messages that are coming through the vehicle itself and can only be felt within the vehicle so if your mind says oh well we'll know by friday and yeah, your right. body's like, nope, it might not be till next year. Then you got to live with that. Right. Because as we move forward in time, alignment is your survival mechanism. Like right. if you don't make space for alignment and you let your conditioned mind pressure you into unaligned action, it could mean not surviving. And that's more right. true every day that passes. Right. Or 
I guess emotional being if so, like you said, if somebody's trying to force the timeline on you, it's almost like also telling you what your feelings are when they're they not have no they have no idea access to they that. Have no access to that because it's literally your soul coming through this body that's just still trying to acclimate to that high vibration and being present with even the deep discomfort of that uncertainty of that transition point of the high to the low to the high to the low and understanding that even the shittiest feelings that you have are part of the information that's coming through and you can't deny that even if you deny especially if you deny the uncomfortable feelings you're actually saying no i don't want to know i don't know what my what my soul is trying to tell me i'd rather just take the more comfortable surface view and that could be right off a cliff you know right so then we've got sacral next most common authority and the thing about the sacral is it's not an awareness center it's not oh let me think about it and let me weigh the pros and cons and let me see uh, you know what this person says or what that person says or let me research it more it's either a fuck yes from the energy from every cell in your body saying yes we're designed for this this is a match to our core coding or a no a contraction a like mm -mm, nope or yeah, there's gross. no there's no mm -hmm. answer at all and when the sacral has no answer you don't that's really, a no yeah unless it's a fuck yes it's a no for sacral beings and if you don't know what your sacral is saying you know come back to it then maybe your sacral is you know overwhelmed by emotional conditioning in that environment maybe and a your lot sacral of people is, can have an emotional center and a sacral but it's the emotional that rules out mm -hmm. right so in this case i'm speaking to just pure sacral beings like yourself that don't and myself. have solar plexus to find right and then we've got splenic which i think is about 25 35 percent um and you know that splenic hit is going to tell you right then and there in the moment safe or not safe and the thing is the spleen is not mental in its awareness so it's not going to say oh they didn't hear me let's say it again oh they didn't get it again let's say it again this the spleen is not of a human consciousness it's more of like the more animalistic consciousness which is just like ah! you know it's just like fuck no you know or mm you know it's that moment by moment awareness and if you're it's not the in elevator that you have been to that feels off and you go i'm not gonna take this elevator right i'm gonna take the stairs like you as a splenic define i mean you know sacral is your authority but you have a defined spleen like when you say you touch the airplane yeah and your spleen is able to pick up the vibrations of that whole experience Correct. because that's what the spleen does it just scans vibrations and you can't lie on a vibrational level. There is no reasoning, there is no rationalizing. It either is safe and healthy, which is what the spleen is looking for, and it's an opportunity for health and survival, or it's not. So that's it's, why if I, I'll use cars for example. If somebody's like, yeah, I'll give you a ride in my car, and I get in the car, and I can already tell it's not taken care of, there's shit everywhere, I already can feel that there's a wheel bearing out in this car. There's a da, 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 da. I'm out of this thing. I don't want to be on the road when the wheel fucking seizes and the fucking brakes you haven't changed for a while. I, I already did it. I already see that feeling of things ready to go out any minute. I'm not going to be in this car when it goes out. But it, with people, it could be safe. Like I just feel safe with your energy to be myself, whether you heard me or not, mm -hmm. or I don't feel unsafe because it makes me feel unsafe because I don't know. You might, who knows? I don't know. It'd be a splenic being would be an interesting one to be like, this fucking shit does not feel safe at all. Mm -hmm. Like walking into a building would just be like, uh oh, this is not good. This doesn't feel good. It feels like I'm going to die in here. And it could be that there's black mold everywhere. Right. Or it could be, you know what I mean? Like mm -hmm. they could feel that shit probably. And Absolutely. that's not a mental thing. Or it's right. Not you can't necessarily see what the problem mm -hmm. is, but you can feel on some level that there's just a, a dissonance in the air. Right. And. I think for splenic beings, it's about compounding and concentrating. And the more that you trust the spleen and just in that split second moment, despite what politeness or your mind is saying, are just like out of this car, no explanation. The more that you trust in that very split second moment, the stronger that awareness gets, the stronger that awareness right. gets, because the spleen is all about concentrating information and data and impressions. And it gets stronger and healthier as we go forward in time. Next up would be, 
you know, uh, I guess self-projected authority, which means if your higher self isn't laying out the plan for you through that strong, powerful tone in your voice, that strongest frequency, there's nothing to do because if you're self-projected, you're a projector, there has to be an invitation. If there are no invitations, lucky you, you know, of course, every projector is like kind of really eager to receive invitations because that's how they get their stuff out in, in life. But if there's no clear recognized invitation for you, there's nothing to do. You're being protected by your aura. Your aura is what brings the invitation in. It goes into the unseen layers and says, hey, person over here, I have the codes for you. And if that person can recognize and invite you based on that energetic exchange, then there's an opening for you. There's an access to healthy energy for you. If there isn't that guidance, especially from the tonality of your voice and that confirmation of your strongest vibration, then there's nothing to get involved in. And if there's nothing to get involved in, that's your strategy and authority protecting you from an incorrect energy. Ego defined people, which can be manifestors also, or you know, ego authority, which can be usually a manifestor, but it can also be um, an ego projected projector. This is about, you know, is your heart really in it? It's about the physical organ of the heart and the intelligence that's in there. You know, the heart has neural tissue like the brain, like mm -hmm. the gut brain. There is a knowingness there. And it's about love and desire. Do you really want this thing that you're going for? Or is it just other amplifi amplified energies in your field pressuring you or sucking you in on a sacral level or getting you high on an emotional wave? You know, these things are you're actually very open and vulnerable to most likely as an ego defined or ego authority being. You need to really tap in. Does it match your truest heart's desire? And you need to really know what that is. And you really need to do the work to connect to what that is for you. And you need to have that in your back pocket because you don't have these other authorities that are more about receiving some kind of feedback or awareness from your environment. It has to come from that inner generated place of this is what my heart wants most. And I'm willing to do anything for it because that's what the willpower center of the heart says. I'm willing to do whatever it takes to get this desire met. Right. Without proving something, right? Like that would be a shadow. And even if it requires proving something, because the defined heart is here to prove itself. You know, it's the undefined heart that is not correct for it to oh, prove I itself. See. That makes but sense. But if the, if, if the heart is your definition and your authority, the ego, the willpower center of the heart is your inner authority, then yeah, proving yourself is a part of that transaction or that experience. But it's going to come in this full bodied love way. Not, not in. Yeah, I guess the shadow would be like, trying I to prove them wrong pushing that you're wrong and i was right. right trying to prove someone else's concept belief opinion wrong because then you're just playing on the realm of the not self of the ajna and then you know other than that we have mental projectors which have no inner authority you know they really have mm. to go on the frequency but the thing is a a self sorry a mental projector is so sensitive and so precise in their awareness and their body is so open to other energies, you're going to taste, feel, absorb the wrongness in the room and immediately know there's something off. And it's even though it seems like, oh, that must be really hard to have no inner authority. It's like, yes, but every cell in your body is going to be like, Ugh, if you're around something that's not correct for you. And it's not necessarily about you know, having to call five people up and talk it out. And that's part of the process for aligned invitations for mental projectors. But in terms of just being around the correct energies and, and experiences or not, you'll know as soon as you taste the aura, because if you're a projector, you eat the aura um, of others, not in a vampiric way necessarily, but you'll know. I mean, if you have any shudder in your spine or weirdness in the energy, leave because the longer you stay in an unaligned energy the longer you know the more chances you are going to have to just be sucked into that conditioning without an ability to leave it's almost like the opposite of an emotional like authority which actually doesn't really know till it has the time enough to really process it and kind right? of yeah whereas like taste it and taste that's it again. kind of the weird thing of a mental projector would be like well let me just keep seeing and 
right? It's almost like they both can like be the be doing the the opposite of what they're doing. Like mm-hmm. emotion will be like this feels really off and everything, and da, da, da. and then it's like, wait, you're supposed to see and get all the pieces before you understand what the fuck's going on. Mm-hmm. And it's like mental projections will be like, well, it feels really bad, but I th- yeah, no, yeah, like yeah, and the rationalization, the rationalization begins, yeah, mm-hmm. and it's like. If there's no interest, if there's no focus, and if there's no recognition of you in that space, again, that's another big sign too. You're meant to be recognized. No one's recognizing you. Right. Don't try and force that because you're going to force yeah. yourself in the Project most unaligned, this, toxic yeah. energy. And then from there, we obviously have reflectors, which it's a way to lunar cycle to make a, an aligned decision. Wait, that 28 day period of the moon moving through all the gates in the wheel. And that goes, you know, that speaks for itself. You know, where you're a reflector, you're not meant to hold your breath in the moment for it to make sense. You have to just kind of take your your sideline, backseat, observer, witness, objective, perspective, and realize that a lot of the time you're not here to get as involved in things as most people because your job is to be pure awareness. Which yeah, has no me agenda. Of a baseball player who is like the best hitter, who it's like, just sit and wait these innings out and see how the game goes in the atmosphere. And you know what? We need you. We need you now after you've seen all the innings and near the end of the game. Okay, yeah, I've seen the whole game. I've seen the whole cycle. All right. Now it's my turn to bat. Okay, boom. Thanks. You know, it's like yes. the. That's a really good example. That's a right? really good like, and you're not, analogy. You're not on the field the whole time and you're not, you know, it's like, okay, I w- got to the game. I'm on the field. Okay, let me go sit on the bench and watch it. Mm-hmm. And you're going to see gonna so be much needed. more from there. Now, you know, once it's the end of the cycle, which reminds me of the end of the baseball game, like, oh, okay. Mm-hmm. And you're here to see what others don't see. And you can't do that if you're in the game, in the yeah. fray. Yeah. I like that better in the fray, but yeah. So those are the... Uh, little guidances to remind you all of right and i think and i know it's so you probably hate doing it but even as an astrologer as me going through all 12 zodiac signs right i have to do it all the time but it's one of those things where it's so important at this moment i feel to remind ourselves of the original coding instead of getting lost in the sauce as i'm calling it right now because that sauce reminds me of the sauce in the matrix that's the dead the ground up people the ground up intravenous fluid that is feeding the new corpse juice not born but grown Mm -hmm. you know entities that are not really human anymore i mean that's kind of the creepy part is when they're in their pods they're not really actually human anymore especially in a natural one because they're ingesting the dead right so it's like a graft or a branch cannot be the root and to pull you out is a pretty extreme thing because even in the Matrix, when they pull Neo out, they spend five minutes going, they, they do acupuncture on him, right? And he, and he wakes up, he's like, am I alive? And he goes, far from it. And he goes, why do my eyes hurt? And he's like, because you've never used them before. And then he's, and he's like, we have to do atrophy on all your muscles because you've never used them before. Right? So there's that whole, if you want out from that place, it's not like, Oh, I'll just get out. Archangel Michael opened his arm up and pull me out. Right? <laughs> like, it's, it's a fucking hard fucking... It's not a... If you think about it, when you go that far off the unnatural path to come back onto the natural path, you have to go through... Even the mind, right? To, uh, that's the whole thing is we never bring somebody awake that's this age because to take that in when he realizes what he's been in this whole time it's too Can much he, and then yeah. he goes he's gonna pop <laughs> and he pops and he, blow, and he throws up and then he knocks out i don't that i think that people are kind of having we're getting to those spots where the realization that i got trapped into this is unfortunately god i don't want to end the show on that note hold on i'm getting a call hello yeah yeah yeah, send the send the raves. <laughs> er, yeah, early. Now <laughs> we need it. <laughs> it's my crystal phone. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, yeah. 
But I think, I, 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 for me, it's like, I mean, you know, that's maybe, yeah. You know, my time is ending in my, my world, I guess, in this world of getting people off the plan that's to destruction. I only have three years left to four. And I think a bunch of people are about to pop like Neo did when they realize what's taken over them. I guess the raves are here to manifest maybe the... Are the raves going to be mostly manifestors? Are the raves going to be a combo of different personality types and designs? Or is it all going to be very similar, like, coding, like, mechanically, as far as, like, all of them will have the solar plexus defined? Well, raves or? are going to be a conscious penta. So a penta, I can um, pull up a chart of what this looks like so don't pop while he's looking for the penta because there's no avoiding the pop by just being like i won't pop don't worry like you don't realize how much the programming can take you to where you're no longer even in the world that you think you are anymore and inversing a world that's fake on you and then waking up from that world is not a world that really you were even engineered anymore to even be like because you let your engineering of the divine be taken from you and to try and come back into that world it's not like the that world doesn't accept you it just is going to take a lot of people a lot of situations and a lot of hope and a lot of trust and a lot of luck to get you back Love is a self-organizing system. Yeah. There's no telling who can get pulled into the flow of love from a very dark place. And that's the beauty of strategy and authority is like with one decision made correctly, you can be put right back on the correct path and the innate spiritual immune system of your design correct, can yeah. come online and change the whole story. So understand that that monopole that's holding us here in this reality is very powerful and miracles are possible. So on the screen, just to show everyone real quick, the conscious penta, this is what a penta looks like. We, we have these currently when we get in groups of three to five and when we get into the penta, it emphasizes you know, our core strengths and allows them to come forward as like the skills we contribute in a group dynamic. So when the raves come, there'll be a conscious penta, meaning there won't be a composite of separate individuals coming together with their skills individually contributed to the endeavor. It'll be that this being that you're looking at here will be self-aware. And it'll have full access to the life force, the direction, and direct manifestation. So will it be a manifester? I don't think so. I think it'll be more of a generative aura but perhaps with, you know, it's hard to say. We really don't know. Because and I don't, don't wanna, know the left or the right angles, right? Like right. To know and I don't want to pretend yeah. to know, and I don't want to no, say make, that makes something sense. that's that, not that true. That actually just answered a lot of huge questions I had about it that just finally, actually, after talking about it so long, finally came up was, what's the signature? But the signature is, of course, going to be defined when the moment comes. Mm-hmm. Which, especially if the sacral is there with, with the throat and the G center, it kind of makes more sense. It'll happen in the moment. It's not like we can even define that now because that moment isn't there yet. It's we can't really beyond, respond right now right? because there's nothing to respond to because it's not there it's yet. It's beyond the awareness that we've yet you know, uh, accessed or unlocked. You know, what's interesting is when you see that Penta, it reminds me of, we were just talking before we started this, the Looking Glass project about the one timeline that, you know, the CIA and so forth looked out into timelines and looked out into the future and they got to where it all comes to one timeline. 
And it, that reminds me of the one timeline. Even how, you know, even these tantric channels of rhythm and discovery here are not fully reaching the G. It's all about this central channel of the 14 too, leading into the gates of direction and identity, mm -hmm. 7, 13, and 1. And how these actually draw on the deep cellular memory actually in the design as well. So that there is almost no, nothing stopping from these, not, nothing stopping the raves from having full access to the collective conscious and unconscious, which means there's no limit to what they could know or be capable of. And that eight one of. is inspiration, right? It's the creative, yeah. And the, then, the channel is inspiration, and yeah. And 33 to 13, what is that? That's called the prodigal. And that's about looking back into the past and the archetypal field of, you know, even occult sciences and secret codes mm. and pulling that from the past as leadership and guidance for the future. And then what's the 31 seven? And the 31 seven, seven is, is that logical energy of being able to chart the course ahead ah. through studying the pattern, mastering the pattern and essentially having an innate um, energetic connection to that trajectory. So it's about taking the fractal trajectory that's already there, determined in our sacred geometry, and being able to speak it into words mm -hmm. and, and delineate it and describe it so that the mind can understand and follow. Yeah, it's interesting that those three channels are, you know, <laughs> there's more channels on the side of the 13, the seven, and on the other side of the 33, mm -hmm. right? Like gates, mm -hmm. right? They could create Usually, other channels, yeah. but those three channels are direct to just the throat and to the G center only. Like there's no other routes they could go. Right. It's like they all kind of get pulled in and and culminated and brought into the central. Is that also energy. what you would see in like the junctification, right? The JX. Right. Is more mm. of like the understanding that it's not a left or right angle. It's much more in alignment in a faded because it feels like that's faded. It does have that fixed fate energy that we understand the JX or the right. juxtaposition crosses of having. Does it operate truly in terms of the mechanics that we're seeing here? Not necessarily. I think it's just more of a symbolic, if anything, representation of That's what of I was trying energy. to do was yeah. a symbolic understanding. Yeah. Because if we kind of do remove the rest of the body graph and we do look at that, the only, you can't go left or right angle. You can only go to juxtaposition, right? So it's mm -hmm. like, the idea that the raves are coming is a faded energy anyway. Mm, yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Right? So it's like, that to me is so powerful. And then, the, you know, the first part of this title is altered fate or alternating fate. This is where you definitely want to stay understanding of who you are and what you have to speak up, but at the same time also know in the throat what hold your understanding of who yourself not give it away or you know because you can have the g center and know who you are but if you don't speak up for it or you don't hold it and ma manifest it either right like it has to be manifested into the reality mm -hmm. and it's it seems here that we see it's only through individuality right because only the central channel of the beat which is about individual mutative energy is what completes you know, the connection between the sacral and the G. So the right. logic, the logic and the abstract process are just there as energy resources, but it's all about feeling the individual mutative direction. So it's only through tapping into your own individual. But, but because is that, I'm, I'm just going to say, so that 214, because it's black and red, would that mean that it's from design and personality? Mm -hmm. So that means that a rave is going to have the uniqueness of that channel that will have both. So we could the, say the channel is connected because there was the design portion and the personality portion. So that's a rare, right. complex, mathematical, yeah, faded. And in this shit, in this theoretical perspective that we're discussing, we can see that maybe that is how the raves are so resistant to conditioning: is that the conscious and the unconscious are braided together in one. Right. That's so there's deep. no opening. There's no entry point for conditioning especially to the life force mm -hmm. and to the identification center mm -hmm. that is then connected to manifesting into the reality incorrectly mm -hmm. so really they are going to be the only things that really are here to 
manifest the true realign the track of fate right the, 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 they're bringing the real life force and the real true identity so maybe when Ra says the idea of essential truth maybe it's the truth as as we know on truth, the outside on the outside but it will be truth. because of the raves energy and their pure manifestations that will be the real truth and it's through their manifestations that we that we succumb to the understanding of what truth now is Right, and there's no Ajna here. So it's not mental truth right. anymore. It's embodied life force, higher dimensional. That know, makes me feel a lot direction. better. There we go. To be honest with you, I was actually like, up until this point, very, the same way I was with Ra when I first heard him. The last thing for me with a whole human design thing was these raves. Until you showed me that, and then I was able to even myself say, hey, does that mean that's personality and design together? And then, then you said the braided, and then I'm like looking at it. I'm like, thank God it's these places. Mm -hmm. <sighs> and raves uh, stand for rays of love. They are right. literally the rays of love of source coming down and coming into full form as a con of pure consciousness. And they, I think that the programming happening with superhero movies today and like the Avengers and all that shit. I've seen some human designs post like, you know, a couple Avengers and be like, the raves are coming, you know? But I'm like, that's again another program. They may not want to formulate and create as that. I mean, those movies are just designed to limit what we can perceive as the potential. Correct. They're just a the ceiling. They're another that, that, that like oh that's not possible one and then two that that's the highest possibility of a super right these car cartoon yeah beings essentially where i feel like um there was there was an interesting thing about anime where it's a little different anime can go in there, there's not as many superheroes it's more like real life stories or emotions or where people go but that there's really interesting like um you know, characters that represent a lot of like old, old, it's almost like channeled like in the old Japanese anime and the new, like they don't focus so much as like American culture on like this one individual, like they'll like, it, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to be, you know, like there's shit that goes on in anime, but they're channeling the way that you look at the backgrounds, the, the way they're focused on a lot more than the individual but the, how the individual is interacting with the environment around it and so forth, which I thought was an interesting thing of like where Japan is and how people in Japan are is like, there's a lot more about the culture, a lot more about, you know, the continuity, the of continuity tradition. of integrity of mm -hmm. things. Whereas the, the, like, like care for the other. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah. Like, especially if you think of just like Japanese anime in any way, right? Like, it's like little happy people and the love. <laughs> and I know like for me being a raver, I, I really was able to finally kind of get that, you know, instead when I was like 15 in high school, it was like a, you know, Westerner dude, like this fucking guy, like, you know, fucking look at these little stupid little things. But it like made more sense at a rave on ecstasy. Like, oh, I see like the joy of, yay! and they, the sounds too, you know, the, yay, 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 you know, and like that was something that, in the rave culture, they embraced more of that anime spirit and the positivity of that because it was love, right? There was like love. Like maybe the raves will be the new rave DJs that will be manifesting like the most pure rave music we've ever fucking heard in our lives. A vibration that aligns you just by hearing it. Right. That will redirect DJs like myself or other musicians or anything to kind of like turn the page and stop rapping about phantom you know, sexual misery or, or Royals Royce phantoms <laughs> you know what I mean and like, wraiths and yeah and, 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 and sacral fake mask sexual trauma implanted, implanted beings. beings and the idea of looking cool I mean it was crazy over the pandemic a bunch of rappers young ones died and the ones that were speaking more truth and rapping about spiritual just died out of nowhere too. Like, it's almost like there's a lot going on right now and you can't be afraid. Like I'm, we don't sit here afraid putting out this info, mm -mm. but those rappers 
did do truth, but also fell for the phantom. Mm -hmm. Let me flex on the yacht and let me flex by doing this and this and this. And you know what? I'll take these drugs and I'll do this because that's what's cool. And then and that's the that second the it just look up to me. Yeah. hits bad down. Mm -hmm. So you could speak truth. You can do all these great things, but if you can't operate outside the phantom matrix and want to dip your toe in a little bit here and there, there's no more fucking around with dipping your toe in the phantom anymore. It'll suck you up that fast because it's at a desperate point where it's like, I, we, they think they're going to win in that timeline. And if you look at the looking glass stuff, they are so set to create all these false wall timelines that hold everybody from all connecting to the one where it all realizes that timeline they've seen, it's all going to crash. Mm -hmm. So they're just like, they'll at this it's point, the they're getting, they're getting sucking. Like they're just like, just grab it, just grab it. I don't give a fuck. They're at that hesitant point, mm -hmm. especially with the cost Desperate. of planning ending. Yeah. So you can't fuck around and go, I'm going to just still try Dabble. to dip my toe in the phantom. No dabbling in the phantom. You can't anymore. Because one toe in and next thing you know, spreading through your entire gene code. Fully. And then, ah, like, you know, like now you have intravenously dead humans being fed to you in tubes in your throat while you're in a VR system program that you don't even realize anymore and sitting in the middle of Saudi Arabia in a big wall that is terraformed to be this beautiful new living city which looks crazy because the way that the architects that have been creating this they're making it look like how in meta when I'm in my oculus how they're creating the environments that you can put yourself in that's why I became a developer and put in other ones I put in I'm in a Mayan temple fucking it's crazy it's awesome like an and oculus is like you can't do this you know warning or we could delete your Facebook I'm like fuck you I don't care and they don't another scare tactic mm -hmm. but like I've taken my Oculus and totally broken the codes and put in a Mayan environment. It's awesome. But their ones look exactly like the architecture of what they're trying to do in the Saudi Arabia wall. 1.3 billion mirror. people going to live in one place. A mirror. A mirror. A phantom reflection. Right. Of the already phantom reality that has been projected upon people. Which is kind of scary because that's kind of like where we're at is even the idea of the mirror in Snow White with the evil queen that was surrounded by the Zodiac wheel. She said mirror and mirror on the wall. Who's the fairest of them all? She projected herself as being so beautiful all the other time. And then finally when the mirror gave the truth, she didn't want to see it. So she was willing to go kill the heart with the three of swords case. And then she told her fucking one of her gardeners you're going to take this knife and you're going to go rip the heart out of her and put it in this three of hearts case. It's a heart with three swords, three of hearts. And then he couldn't do it. Right. And then that's when she goes with the apple and she goes too far at the mirror. People have to go look in these mirrors now in themselves and be like, am I really following my truth or am I fucking turning into what they, this phantom system wants me to. And I'm not being my true self and I'm, trying to look cool for Instagram. I'm trying to look cool for others in Instagram. I'm trying to look who's the fairest of them all, right? That idea. It's very, very draconian, but it also is very like the dark side of Venus, which is like the false light energy of like the beauty and the, the sacrifice to make for that beauty that you give your life up for it and that you'll take another for it. The idea of like adrenochrome is we will take the, living life force out of a child to make ourselves more beautiful. What's the difference we're seeing today in the energy forces that we're seeing with people doing whatever they can to take a shot, to go look more beautiful or to do this, to more beautiful. Like it's the same Luciferian shit. <laughs> that was some heretic shit. I think that's a wrap. I do want to inform. Oh, please. I want to inform everybody about the 
human design embodiment retreat that we're doing in Peru during the eclipse cycle to actually visit the Stargate sites around Machu Picchu with my good friend, longtime collaborator Satya, who's basically right there with me as far as human design knowledge and just really living the experiment. And we, when is this going to be? This is October 26th to November 9th ish, around those dates. I don't know if it was, I put it on my Telegram channel, um, but it's going to be a really cool experience to actually live day by day practicing design in the flesh, in the aura, and being able to be in this space of non judgment to experiment with your design and go on this pilgrimage basically to these sacred sites in Peru, which are really activated and basically stargates and right. um, it's an amazing journey that's available to those who feel called so definitely check that out on my link in bio telegram channel and um definitely the adventure of a lifetime that's badass wow. you should come I, I, I'm going to be in Texas doing my retreat with uh, Robert uh, Phoenix. And then, yeah, I'll be doing world finals of jet skiing. So I'm like going to be like, <sighs> but you know, man, MGs I'm more of like when the pressure comes and the time comes and I'm like, fuck it, let's go. That'd be really exciting. To be honest, I'm <sighs> not going to lie. It's a vulnerable place. I'm nervous to go to Peru. Yeah. Yeah. I went last year. I know. I know that. I know all. Actually, you know what? All the most greatest spiritual people in my life that have been influential in my life and good spiritual allies with have all been. And I guess maybe it's my South Node shit and Sag where I'm just like, oh God, weird shit's happened to me in all these weird places around the world, you know, in past lives. Yeah. So I always get very like, for me, that's just, this is just me. Most people love, I can't wait to get my passport and go to another country. My fucking war is like, ah! And that's, it just, that just scares me because every time I travel internationally, something horrible happens to me. They don't let me in. They tell me you can't do astrology here. Like I'm on a red flag list all the time. Hmm. So. It's crazy. Every time I try to do it, every, whether it's Mexico, whether it's Canada, wherever I try to go, something gnarly happens with the authorities, with the customs, with the, and I'm in a fucking cell. I'm always like, what the fuck? Yikes. Yeah. No. And, 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 and that's been my test where it's like, oh, I won't, it won't happen again. Oh, like my ex-wife can testify. I'm like, she was like, I can, I've never seen this before in my life. I'm like, I know about me being an astrologer or even when I was supposed to go to, you were around when I was supposed Maldives. to go to the Maldives. Yeah. And the government was like, no, he doesn't have the ability to do that. And no, you're not allowed in. We won't even let you in. I'm like, what? So maybe Peru's cool because again, now I'm playing my mind. Well, we've already got teammates on the ground there getting the grids yeah, that's, ready. That's good. I don't know. And that's, I'm, I'm just being vulnerable with expressing my fears. Of course. I mean, that I, I totally know understand this, that's that, this, that this life fun. I'm going to have to get over that I've created a shield. That's not a good one. Of, do it. of international travel for myself. We still got to go to London. Yeah. Well there, I, yeah, there, I feel like your ancestors that's, that's are like ancestor. clearing the way. Yeah. But and Egypt, in Egypt, big time, yeah. I mean, on while you're already over there, why not? I know, on the Nile. But anyway, I, that, I think that's so badass because that's really where to test the mechanics in a sacred space, that's another level. And to be honest with you, Brian and I did an episode on Monday about what experiments are good and what experiments are bad right now. And that's a good experiment. That's an experiment where you want to go right now in life. Not where you're like, let's go to fucking CERN and take the new Omicron shot. Free vaccines by and, the water yeah, exactly. cooler. Exactly. And see how it feels. Like, you know what I mean? Like, that's not where I want to get. It's the opposite, you know? 
especially the the ley lines that go through Peru and the sacred sites is what's gritting and keeping the earth even alive and stable at this moment. Mm -hmm. So that's a space of grounding right now and into we, the etheric realm. Yeah. And when we bring our codes from our body grids, you know, that just activates those energies even more right. and strengthens them. And that's part of the grid work that is part of this journey. That's true. And we all have different connections to different sites. And I felt similarly about other places where I just feel like I almost can't go there. Like I already know I can't. And I, I like, you know, for me, it's other places like. Like Brazil's my no, no off my astral cartography. Because Pluto, Saturn, Mars intersecting all mm, through there. Yeah. No, <laughs> it's like, no, yeah. Every astrologer too has told me. With, you know, I didn't even ask for it. They're like, oh, by the way, stay away from Brazil. I'm always like, yeah, no, I know. Stay away from the east coast of South, Af South America. I'm like, okay. But the west coast is fine, which mm -hmm. Peru is on the west coast. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But I guess maybe that's kind of my fear as it starts encroaching. In, but it, it, that maybe that would be like the thrill of my life, right? Where it's like the wall of the phantom is over. Yeah, it's like, like you can see it, it over they there. They can see it, Brazil like, and all wow. that. And I'm in Peru where I'm like, it's okay, I'm good, <laughs> you know? That's a good test, you know, that's an interesting one. I love that shit. That's fucking, but that's where I think we all are going to start living in our truth by more is, is, is knowing these things, you know, like, like if you said Brazil, it'd be like, fuck no. But with me, I'm like, actually like a yes, but I'm like, oh fuck, can't, do I have enough energy for that after what my October is going to be? It's like, shit, I'm going for a world title and having to go to Texas and teach and drive and come back and all. But and then, and then do I have enough energy to go on a plane in this place and keep running it? So yeah, Whew. these are going to be intense times, hmm. but I feel like that the only place we can go now is places where we can connect with others that are really, truly in alignment right now and want to really stay and bring the original code not back but bring the life force to a higher degree of it literally raise the frequency because it's not that i don't know this might sound crazy but you know we call our there's a lot of talk about light workers i feel that light workers now the role really was about holding the original code and using the life force and being the strongest battery of that life force ever because so many have dimmed theirs down mm -hmm. to keep this place going. Mm -hmm. That's a good way to look at it. Well, no phantom, no masks, no, no falling for this next spell that is beyond a spell it's new it's ai spells where they have targeted it. like i feel like black magic has always been of course the worst thing but imagine mixing it with ai technology ai black magic that might be another good episode of what to come but i think it's a good description of what is happening right now and what's about to be plugged in with an update in a matter of weeks with this new injection. More on that next week. More on that next week. Here on Before Dawn. Before Dawn on High Vibe. Make sure that you join us on High Vibe. Make sure that you find everything about Human Design Maven uh, Dylan right here on the links down below. And of course, join us on High Vibe TV by subscribing down below at any of the apps or the website. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks, everyone. And we'll see you on the next Before Dawn. Thanks, everybody. Bye.